Welcome everyone to another observability clinic, seven steps to identify effective SLOs, quality versus quantity, enabling you to scale SLOs. A really cool topic, SLOs has been on our mind for a couple of episodes now. And today I have AJ here. How are you? Good, good. Thanks for having me, Andy. I hey. am a technical product specialist. I work on the Dynatrace One organization. Uh, our org work uh, focuses on personalizing learning, and onboarding of Dynatrace. We do offer a premium service where you could have myself working with your application teams to plan your success with Dynatrace. Uh, kind of what we wanna talk about today, or let's talk about the topic at hand is service level objectives. So there's been this enterprise push to get SLOs defined for application teams. What this has caused is just this unneeded and noisy uh, SLOs. So that's that quantity we're talking about there. What we want to talk about today is actually defining a systematic approach to defining quality SLOs. Uh, this approach is something that Steven Townsend has actually defined. So we're going to give him that credit. Mm -hmm. And then, yeah, let's talk about that a little bit here. Yeah, that's perfect. Okay. And before you jump in, um, I just wanted to remind everybody this is a two-step uh, kind of observability clinic. The first one is going to be really uh, more high level on how you get to your SLOs. And the second one is more practitioner-led. So this is a great kind of split up. But with this, uh, take it away. Yep. So let's take a look at the agenda. So we're going to just do a real recap of what SLO keywords are, how those the composition of those uh, SLO keywords, and then we'll take a look at that best practice of defining effective SLOs. So speaking on that practitioner webinar, uh, here is a little sneak peek of that resulting dashboard that we'll discuss at the end of that uh, uh, webinar there. So just a little sneak peek for you there. Very cool. Uh, so starting with uh, SLI, this is a very important uh, topic because this sets the tone for the service level objectives. The SLI or service level indicator is just a key metric that helps to measure the health, availability, reliability of a service. So you're thinking about good events. Uh, we can take this as uh, we can take an example of this. So focusing on, let's say, HTTP request latency. What does the SLI look for that look like for that example? Uh, we can think about the number of HTTP requests where the response time is less than or equal to five seconds. So that's our SLI. Uh, on the other side of things is the SLO or the service level objective. It's simply a moving availability percentage. Anytime we are below that percentage, we have missed our target. Uh, that's when we start to run into our error budget. Anything above that SLO is just we're in good standings, we're okay. This is what our objective is. Uh, taking our example and applying an SLO to it, looks like this. So we can take our SLI of request latency less than or equal to five seconds and then add on top of it an SLO. So 95%. This indicates 95% of our requests are within our uh, SLI. So we are in good standings. Anything again below it would indicate we've missed our target. Mm -hmm. Anything above is and we're in good standings. This is great, and by then, the way. I'm, I'm just want to yep. say Thank you so much. I've been trying to explain this so many times. And yeah. it's it's a really great way how you have explained this with the, the amount of requests that are important for you to measure success divided to the total amount. And then you want to basically with this rate measure, figuring out what is the, your target for your objective. Spot yeah, on. exactly. As, as simple as you can make it is the yeah. best kind of way to uh, converse on creating yeah. SLOs, definitely. Yeah. So uh, now a little bit about the error budget. This is just that remainder of your SLO. So if you were to set a 99.5% SLO, your remainder is at 0.5%. And we did just a little bit of math here just to break down what that looks like in terms of available downtime per month. Uh, uh, this breaks down to about 216 minutes per month. Mm -hmm. uh, let's take our example now. Uh, same thing, 95%. That 95% breaks down to a 5% error budget. Doing the math brings us to about 2,100 minutes per month. Mm -hmm. So when you're talking about error budgets, uh, what we want to do is allow 
Uh, the the biggest thing about error budgets it's that it sets a, a common goal for your developers, your SREs, your DevOps. Instead of trying to figure out where to develop, where to innovate, we are now focusing on staying within our error budget. This allows for teams to innovate as long as we're in our error budget, uh, as well as on the other side, if we ever use up our error budget, a big focus should be to block deployments. We should be able to, we should be incentivizing our developers to stay within our error budget so that we can further innovate. Anytime we use it up, we should be blocking those deployments because uh, we are not in good standings and blocking the deployment is always a big hit to our sprints. So definitely, uh, definitely a thing there is uh, working with error budgets. Mm -hmm. It's kind of the whole idea of SLOs actually. Yeah, for one one way I always explain is it allows you to balance yeah. the. Um, do you want a more? Do you have a room for experimentation, or right. you cannot experiment anymore because you're already so tight? Because if you mess something up with your experiment, you will violate yeah. your SLO, and therefore you have a, a penalty. Yeah, it's pretty perfectly put. Yeah. yeah, it's always having that penalty, kind of incentivizing your developers yeah. definitely. So now going into Stephen Townsend's seven seven step of identifying effective SLOs. The first step is getting on the same page. So we want our DevOps, SREs, developers to all be using the same terminology when we're talking about generating effective SLOs, identifying customer groups. So who, who is it that you are providing services to? Identifying those services that you're providing to those customers, prioritizing those services, breaking down those services into objectives. We're always thinking about reliability. And then finally, uh, choosing those indicators. All this leads up to establishing your SLOs. So going into the first step of getting on the same page, what we're, what we're talking about here is just simply terminology. We want to remove noise of, uh, we want to focus on the different layers of your platform, like the front end, the back end, the data layer. We want to remove all that terminology and just stick with services. So we want to focus on any feature or function that you're providing to customers as just services. So your front end, your different layers, your should all just be talked about as services. And then your platform or your application stack, uh, consider that just a platform. And then another thing is actually defining what reliability means. Again, it's the probability a platform will perform a required service without failure under stated conditions. Some of the things we wanted to think about as we're uh, discussing reliability is availability. Is the service there when customers need it? Correctness, does the service function as intended? Performance, is the service stable, fast and able to meet demand? So these are the terminologies that we want to start using to remove noise and just focus on creating effective SLOs. So the second step is actually defining your customer groups. Some of the questions you can ask are, how do people interact with my platform? What services do they use or rely on? A customer could be a human that inter directly interacts with a browser that interacts with your platform or it could be other platforms that rely on your platform, like a microservice architecture. So here are a couple examples where we have digital customers, system admins, call center customers. On top of that, you could add a whole myriad of different uh, customer groups. This all depends on what, what services your platform provides. Uh, the next step here is to actually identify services by customer groups. So we're going to take our customer groups and then start to talk about what requests does the platform provide to those customers. So those requests are the services that your platform provides. Different customers might be relying on different services. So simply being able to define those will help us in creating effective SLOs. This is a very important step in the process because identifying the right services will have a more effective SLO at the end. Uh, it, it will take some practice. Uh, it does take some open communication. Some things that could help is having an architecture diagram to be able to just visualize what is happening within the platform and where users interact with that platform. 
The fourth step is just prioritizing those services we've just defined. So some services might not be as critical as others. Uh, this just will just help set the focus of our SLOs. So here for the digital customers, we have logging in. Uh, we've set that as the most critical uh, service. So we're going to focus on that first. Our, seven, our, our fifth step here is to just break down that service into different, different objectives. So for each service, we want to start to think about what is an availability requirement, what's a performance requirement, maybe a volume of activity that we expect for that service and correctness of that service. Uh, some of these uh, thoughts are, so there's some industry standard frameworks out there that we could use to help us define our objectives. Uh, one of those being Google's four golden signals. I think Andy, you might have had come up with, with one of your own as well. Yeah, want to exactly. talk about that a little bit? Yeah, so the four golden signals are, I think, from the Google's SRE uh, book, right. right? And there's also the red metrics and the use metrics, I think, from Netflix and from Uber. And then the ones that uh, I posted a while ago was the, I call them the ACE metrics, right? It's availability, right. conversion, and engagement. So, yeah, I'm more focusing on the end user, which is exactly what you are doing here, focusing on what matters most, which is the service we're delivering to an end consumer, and therefore, we want to make sure that they are reliable and available and performing. Right, exactly. So let's take this login and set some objectives for it. So some things for login, uh, we want users to be able to log in at any time. We want to handle hundreds of logins per minute. We expect logins to be almost immediate. We want logins to be successful, having no errors. So those are objectives we've set within this step. Next thing is to take those objectives and then define some indicators. So these indicators should help us understand what it means for this objective to happen, right? So what, it, what does it mean for logging to be successful? It means that there's very low error rate and there's very high availability of that objective for our service. This is another very important step because it helps set the focus of reliability for the service. And then now that kind of wraps everything up with our final step here. We take the objective, the service, those indicators we define, and then we can just simply establish our SLO. Our SLO should have some keywords like availability percentage, timeframes, conditions. These are something that we can easily measure. We want to be able to easily measure these things. So for error rate, we have a scenario where we want to have less than 1% error rate over five minutes, or the flip side of that, we want to have 99% a correctness of our uh, logins, for example. And the same thing for availability there. Mm -hmm. I really, so yeah, that, I want to, I want to just quickly say this is so spot on and so nicely put with, uh, especially from the left to the right here, you are taking some, from a language perspective, it is more let's say descriptive and business, that business can also understand it. Login is successful, right. no errors. And then you're really then kind of detailing it. What does this mean? And I think that that's great. Uh, the only thing that I would add here, um, because I've done some workshops with people, error rate is a very common uh, metric here that is to be used as an indicator. The question is also, what is an error in the technical term? Is everything other than HTTP 200 an error? Or would it also include maybe... 300s redirects should not be an error. 400s might not be an error if somebody puts in the wrong username and password. But these are then the, sure. the specifics. But other than that, this is so nicely put from left to right, spot on. I love it. That's yeah, really great. Yeah, awesome. Again, uh, this is all the work of Stephen Tao. Oh, Stephen, yeah, yeah, yeah. Shout out to New Zealand. For sure. So yeah, so kind of sneak peeking again to that uh, uh, workshop that we're going to do next here, the practitioner webinar. Uh, we have this visualization of this process in our dashboard, uh, starting with who are my customer groups, what are my services that are providing these customers, indicators for each, for those uh, for that service, and then finally those SLOs. Let's kind of take a look at this in a uh, dashboard here. So here is that dashboard that I'm uh, that our that I'm talking about, this is going to uh, be the result of the next uh, practitioner webinar that we, Andy and I do here. So again, for each customer group, we have it listed here. 
Uh, in this example template, I have a couple customer groups. So scrolling down, I'll see my generic customer, my admin customer. These are just examples that I just mm -hmm. put together in a dashboard. And then for each customer group, uh, in this case, I have one service per customer group, but you could imagine multiple services here. And then for each service, the indicators and those uh, SLOs. So yeah, I think that should finish everything up there. Let's go back to that demo. Yeah, uh, I think this was awesome, right? I think this was a nice explanation of, first of all, a recap, what are SLIs and what are SLOs, doing it, doing it in a much better way than I have ever done in my slides. <laughs> you also mentioned the error budget. And then thanks to Stephen, um, who has then showed us the seven ways how you can, how you find really your SLOs in an effective way. And as we said, right, we want to go straight, well, kind of straight. We want to conclude this one. But if you want to see how we can automate all this, I want to ask you back to uh, actually walk us through this, but not only for doing it with a simple application, because that's kind of probably easier, but how can we also do this at scale? If you have organizations right. that do not have one application, but maybe 50, 100, 1,000 applications, how can we scale this? And I know you will tell us a lot about Dynatrace and also the Monaco project. Yeah, exactly. I hope you guys will join us there. Perfect. Thank you.